So the beginning of this video is actually the last thing I filmed. <laughs> Good morning, gardeners. So this is back outside. It's been in the house while it was blooming beautifully. But I decided it needed this moisture of all the rain. It's in the house a week. I don't like to keep them in there any much longer than that. Um, not a lot going on. I lost one plant that used to be right there, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. I guess I can move all these over. Whoops, <laughs> maybe. Maybe I can move all these over. Um, I don't know if this has reattached itself yet, but I water it so much, I'm thinking that it should be getting close if it hasn't. And the Oncidium, the cherry, cherry baby cross is also uh, back out here. There's another Oncidium here that isn't doing so good. Part of it's died off. And I had another one that the front part died off, but then it's sending out beautiful roots, so I don't know what that means. Or not beautiful roots, but new pseudobulbs. But uh, yeah, this is finished blooming. So I see one brown leaf there. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, you gotta make sure you stay up on the watering on this because it tells you immediately. And this one's not doing well. In fact, I'm beginning to think these little pots are not good for Vandas because it's the second one that's gone downhill on one of these. Okay. There we go. And, oh, I know, back here. I said this one finally took root, right? Remember me saying that? But look down here. <laughs> it's got a root coming out the bottom, too. So, finally. I just haven't been good on those kind of uh, pots, I'll call them. And this little guy is so cute. And his roots are looking pretty good. This one continues to lose leaves off the bottom. But it does have roots, and they're green, so I don't know. Yeah. And this one, of course, just someone had said that it, these just slowly die, kind of. Which, oh, wait a minute. Is that a root or a leaf? I think they're roots, but they feel leafy, too. This one's okay, though. I've still got something going on here. Yeah, I might not get any more leafless orchids after this is gone. I have a little section I did on this, so I won't. Oh, he's all wet. Give him a little shake. Oh, he smells so good. I can smell him all over here. Yeah. Did I miss a bloom? That looks like a bloom spike. If he bloomed, he bloomed during the hurricane when they were inside. They were inside like a week. <laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot why. We weren't able to get them out, but. And it looks like I have something starting here on one Phalaenopsis. The rest are pretty done, so. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's kind of weedy out there because it rains all the time. All right, so let me show you some of the good footage of, oh that's a great vine leaf by the way. This year it hasn't been eaten by the Skeletors. Um, I'm going to show you a couple shots of some of the good bloomers for the last week or so. Hello gardeners. <laughs> yes, we have a beautiful spike here with three bloomers on it. And uh, so it made its way into the house as the feature orchid of the day. Yeah, let's look at the tag. The coloration is so weird on it that every time it's bloomed, I have worried that it was a diseased plant. And every time I go try to look it up, I can't find the exact flower, but I find its parents and I could see how it would have the coloration that it does. Yeah, so very pretty. And we have another bloomer. <laughs> I almost missed these because of crowding them all together for Hurricane Elsa that didn't uh, really hit us. <laughs> we just had like a tropical storm. This is 
Oncidia Acca Baby Raspberry Chocolate Scent. Definitely has a little bit of a scent. I can smell it. This is one that had previously bloomed in a different area. The same plant that I think I showed you not long ago. These are the two spikes that were not yet open and were bent from growing up against the screen porch window screening whatever so that's what these are and uh, i almost miss getting these because some of these are starting to fall off on the first spike that opened but let's look at them again very pretty and vibrant and dainty just really nice the smell is wonderful or the scent and look who's blooming for like the third time yep it's frilly doors. Yummy smell. Mm -hmm. A spicy, citrusy kind of thing. Let's see what this says. Okay, so it came from St. Pete Orchid Farm in St. Petersburg, Florida, and it just says Catacetum frilly doors. I hate to touch it. <laughs> It's a very waxy flower, kind of like um, angricium. There she is. Isn't she lovely? And to see how she hangs on the plant. She's the wooden basket right there. That's her neighbor. <laughs> And in full disclosure, we've had a couple of fatalities. This is the, there you go, the gold digger uh, with epidendrum, I think. Uh, anyway, I don't know what happened. It was doing so well, and it's up on that with my, on the side that I water daily. And it was doing so well. And then all of a sudden it came out, half of it was brown, and two days later, this is it. Yeah, in fact, the thing is still even wet from, so, uh, I don't know what caused it. Maybe the hot temperatures, that's all I can think of. Um, it was in the sunniest location on that, but that's still not a really sunny spot. All right, this one we lost, I don't think I shared this with you, but the 1957 Vanda Ampoule. Amp I don't know how to say it, but anyway, I was fascinated because of the year, classic year, 1957. Yeah, its leaves just fell off and it was gone. Now, this was, I don't think I've already shared it, but I think this had to do with the cold weather and bringing it in and staying in for a while. What, I had them in recently for something. Oh, when we had our sliding glass door worked on. Anyway, I don't think it enjoyed being in the house and going back and forth. So, oh, it was hurricane. It was first the door. First it was cold. Then it was warm. Then it was the door. Then it was warm. Then it was the hurricane. <laughs> and uh, I don't think it um, appreciated the change in temperatures back and forth and dry and humidity between the house and the outside. So, yeah, so it's gone. But I can't end on that. I end on a different <coughs> ugly note. I have pulled this one Phalaenopsis out of the um, thing where I keep the other Phalaenopsis, Phalaenopsi, <laughs> and it does have new growth, you know, it looks great like that, but look, it's got those trails on some of its leaves, so I don't want it near the other ones. Um, well, this one has just maybe one. But the new leaves, well, they're a little bit soft, but they're actually not too bad. But yeah, so what is this one? This one actually has a name. Wow. Alabaster by self. Because most of my fowls are just, you know, they were like a gift or something. And they didn't come with a pedigree. <laughs> but so right now I just have them over here on the table away from the others. But again, I don't want to end with something icky. So let's go look at what I've done with the dendrobiums. 
that used to hang right outside there. I decided that it just needed them to have a little less sunlight. Well, they were getting hot sun, but only for a small period of time in the day. And they were kind of blocking the sun for some of the other plants. So I moved them to a different spot that gets mottled sun throughout the day. And let's go see. Yep, I put them on the fence where my picture frames used to be. And they'll get rainwater here too. There's also some Oncidium on here that used to be on a stand right by where these were. There's the big one, the purple flowers. Um, and move them over here too, because in the overhang, they're not getting any rainwater really, not much. And then I have my two cows, Catlias, sorry, that seem kind of unhealthy and I wanted to get away from the others. I actually hasn't, haven't on this one paid it any attention for like a year. And I went, looked over there and it's got a new growth, a new shoot on it. So I said, okay, well, if you're, you're a survivor. Let's give you a chance. Let's move you to a better spot. And then that's my Fuchs Mandarin that I don't know what, ha I, I think um, scale impacted it greatly. And I've moved it all over my yard. <laughs> looking for different places for it. So we're gonna try it here and see how it does. Anyway, I think they look kind of pretty along the fence line. Actually, when I'm inside my screen porch and I look out, they're beautiful. Ooh, the crinum lily sure smells good. So anyway, thanks for watching. Happy gardening. I wanna move my staghorn fern to the front yard. You're looking through the window and it's raining. That's what those drops are. Um, I think it's starting to do better. I don't know, it's pretty big.